So we've talked about everything this week, okay? Yes. How we're going to guard Joel Embiid, what we expect from Pascal Siakam, James Harden, Tyrese Maxey, Fred's health, OG's importance. I feel like we've covered everything. So I'm going to hit you with a quick first round quiz. I just wanted you oh. to pick from these, okay? Okay. Number one, who has more 30 point games in this series, James Harden or Gary Trent Jr.? You got to think a little oh, critically man. about this because the defense is geared towards stopping James Harden from having a 30 point scoring game, whereas the defense is not gearing towards Gary. Yeah. I mean, I think the other part of this is like, okay, so obviously James has a way higher, you know, Per game average. Although I think his average with the uh, with the Sixers was like 21 points. And Gary's averaging like 17. So it's not as different. But obviously we know James is an explosive score. He can definitely do it. However, you have to consider that Gary only scores 30 or 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like his average is different, man. You'll score 30 like twice in the series and then yeah. score 10 the rest of the game. Let's look at if Gary has ever scored in the 20s. No. Uh, but yes, I, I oh, totally he, understand yeah. what you're saying. This is I'm hard. still going with James though. Come on, okay. man. Okay. No, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it okay. out there. But this is like surprisingly close. I agree with you. Yeah. Like it's, and it's not like we're trying to say, oh, we're homers. And we're saying no, no, James no, no. Harden and, and Gary Trent there, Jr. There is some thought behind scores. this. There's clearly not. Man. There is some thought behind this, I promise. Um, okay. right. Second one, number of 20-point, 10-rebound games from Scotty Barnes in this series, if I were to set the over-under at one and a half. Uh, I'll go over. Okay. I'll go over, yeah. Um, I think for me, you know, He's going to be attacking the offensive glass quite a bit. I actually want to see a, a fair bit of Scotty, especially when Embiid sits, t- putting his like mark on the game, especially when the Embiid is not there or if Embiid's covering somebody who's more stretch him out to the perimeter or whatever. Because I, I think there's a good chance for him to score a lot against a lot of these guys. And I think a lot of it is going to also be, you know, in the typical Scotty Barnes fashion, there's going to be a lot of putbacks, there's going to be a lot of cuts, there's going to be a lot of dunks, rolls to the rim. Like, you know, he's just very good at playing off of the other guys. And, um, again, it's the same thing with Gary. It's like the defense is going to be honed in on taking away Fred and taking away Pascal. So it's about what the other guys can do for you. And in single coverage, can Scotty give you 20 and 10 against a team that outside of Embiid doesn't really look at that athletic and they don't really protect the gloss? Yeah, I, I think he can. Okay. Two is probably, you know, optimistic. And, and to be fair, if he has two of these, the Raptors probably win the series. Yeah. So maybe they will win the series. Okay. Next up, will Joel Embiid have a game in this series where he scores less than 20 points? Just one. Okay. No, it'd be multiple, man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. Because that's that's a wasn't he's a scoring champion, right? Average about 30 points a game basically this season. Yeah. I mean, look, multiple might be even optimistic because I think he's improved his game to the degree where, like, look, you can force him into taking tough shots, but he can make enough tough shots. And he's taking so many shots that he probably will ultimately just get the raw total to over 20. But I don't know, man. I also saw the last time the Raptors played the Sixers in the playoffs, which obviously had Marcus all and it was a different team. Serge Ibaka, like Kawhi Leonard, like, th- come on. Like, we know that that's a different level, right? Joel averaged 17 in that series, man. Yeah, I was shocked when you put those numbers out. Yeah. Considering how dominant they were. I'm 37% percent shooter. This is Nicky Nurse, baby. It's Nicky Nurse, baby. Yeah, considering how dominant the numbers are in terms of the plus minus when Embiid was on the court. Yeah, it's fine, man. But, you know, what do we... It's, it's like, it's like the oh, the Raptors were plus 11 with Kyle Lowry on the court when he scored zero points against Orlando. I'm like, I don't care. I thought you were going to say Patrick Patterson. The no. OG plus minus. I just wanted to say another Orlando Magic reference. King, oh, yeah, you got to stop me. It's running this into in the, the ground. Um, yeah. That's what I do. Um, So, first... Oh, this one. So by the end of this series, Raptors fans will be sick of which Philadelphia 76ers player? Mm. Yeah, probably Niang or, or Maxi. I just think that those guys are... Obviously, Maxi's uh, going to do a lot better in the series than Niang. But Niang is definitely a guy who can you know hit the outside shot and um, you know probably hurt you a little bit with the scoring. Of course, the Raptors will go at him as well defensively, and I think that's where you know the Raptors definitely need to do that as much as possible. But uh, no, he's he's a he's a shot maker, and I think you'd probably be sick of him. To be honest, I thought you were gonna say which official is you're gonna be sick of um, because yeah, I, those I, those are your storylines, not mine. Yeah, can yeah. I just quickly put this in here? Um, so James Harden, there's there's a stat called free throw rate, right? Which is um, the number of free throw attempts per field goal attempt. Okay. Okay. So, for example, Pascal, I mean, he he shoots like 17 times a game, but he goes to the free throw line. Basically, this is how much you're grifting. 
per per pretty field much, goals. Pretty much. Obviously, like there's also a difference. Like some some guys are just hard to guard, and yeah, you I ultimately mean, have to foul them. Like, like Demar is an ethical free throw grifter. I feel you don't. What does that even mean? What is ethical free throw grifter? You know, no. shouts shouts to that iconic tweet. Yeah, Everything I, I know, is either ethical or unethical. Yeah. Okay. So just for reference, right? Pascal. I mean, it's, again, these guys play different games. I, I sure. totally understand, right? But Pascal Siakam, his free throw attempt rate this season is at 31%. Okay. Okay. James Harden's free throw attempt rate in Philadelphia as a member of the Sixers is 65%. Yeah. So for every field goal he attempts, he's going to get 0.65 free throw attempts. I'm just saying I've seen Pascal. That's absurd. I've seen Pascal at the basket more than James Harden. Yeah. Taking contact. So I think, I think again, it, the question to really be which official is going to need the security escort out of <laughs> yeah. Social Bank Arena. It's you know, like shout out to Mark Davis back in the day. You know, I wish we could do this. Obviously, the NBA would never make these refs available. But instead of doing like the Scotty Barnes Rookie of the Year propaganda, we have a ref on every week. <laughs> Just have you grill him. <laughs> on the line, uh, Evan Scott. Um, so... Next up, first ref you suck chant at Scotiabank Arena. I've got the over-under at 7 minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the third quarter of Game 3. What? Oh, well, Game 3, probably yeah. right, because the first two are in Philly. That might be too soon. Okay. That might be too soon. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and we're not counting your chant. Yeah, exactly. Okay, it's no, the course, actual that'll fans. Be like That'll be when they yeah. announce the officials. Yeah. It, this is fictional. Everything we talk about in the radio booth is fictional. But, purely yeah. imaginative. Otherwise, um, the whole show is autobiographical. Oh, um, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, how can I say this? <laughs> how can you say it? Maybe the, run it by me first before the, you say it. The building has been quieter of late. So, you know, I, I, I hope that that doesn't hold true for the playoffs. It'd be a real shame. Yeah, no, there were some good home crowds at the end of the season. There, you didn't think? Were, against yeah, Cleveland. Yeah, prices were down. Against Boston. Prices were down. Even the Houston crowd looked good. That one's that price was super down. <laughs> all right, all right. This guy's talking so, inflation. No, uh, no, I'm just saying, though. No, I'm just saying, like, I, I think that uh, um, fourth quarter, I think that the first for, game one, or I guess the first game at home by the fourth quarter, there should be something, but I'm probably anticipating in the fourth quarter there'll be a refuse suck chant, yeah. Okay. Finally, which two Raptors players do you think are most likely to be spotted at Insomnia Cookies in Philadelphia? This was a place that Kyle and Kawhi famously went during the 2019 series. Uh, you got to pick two Raptors that will be spotted there. Yeah, so this is uh, this is how, I guess, immature I was as a reporter in, in the profession. Was? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Back bro. in 2019. You're one of the best, bro. Back in 2019, I was... The story came out, and... I had this idea of like, why don't we go track down this 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 insomnia cookies and go talk to the employee? How's that bad? That's literally uh, like a story idea straight out of my playbook. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. So anyway, you could probably use some maturing in your <laughs> profession as well. How do we conclude on this? No, but then I so I obviously I knew where the Raptors were staying. It, it wasn't like a big secret or anything. It's a very lavish hotel. Plus, we had gone to the the hotel multiple times to interview players, or whatever, right? But so I, I searched, and there was like two insomnia cookies, like of equivalent in distance. To the hotel. And I guess I could have just gone to both, but I don't know. Ultimately, I was yeah. I was too lazy and I didn't go. I, I'm a little, I kind of regret it, to be honest, you know? Yeah. Be like, at least we could find out, like, what did, what did Kyle and Kawhi order? Yeah, maybe Sportsnet can send us there for game five Let's and game seven. Let's do it. You know, they have a they have two Chinatowns in that, in, the, in Philadelphia. Oh, man. They have a, they have a really cool market. Yeah, we can do Lots the, we can food. do the Dragon Ball Z fusion dance at yes. both Chinatowns and take a photo. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think I think Greg Sansoni is sold. You really I, think, I think we're going to Philadelphia. So you didn't name me the two players, though. Two players that will be spotted at Insomnia Cookies, most likely. Yeah. Um, it's got to be like Scotty and, and another rookie, right? Okay. Yeah. So Scotty and Delano? No, just Scotty has like the energy of a guy who's eating a lot of cookies. Yeah, he's going to hug every employee there. Yeah. Yeah. In, in a great way, but yeah. Actually, please, social distance. Come on, Scotty. That's right, yeah. Please, Scotty. But in any case, yeah, I'm putting I'm picking Scotty, and then I don't know who's Scotty's best friend on the team. Oh, do we know that actually? He's probably best friends with everybody on the team. Like he's just that kind of character. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's too many best friends. I'm gonna go with Delano though. Yeah, Scotty and Delano go get cool insomnia cookies. So we've come to this now after nine and a half hours, minus half an hour, when you decide to just stay back after interviewing Bobby Webster at the practice facility that's to listen busy. to Fred Van Vliet talk, and leave me here stranded. Make you nervous, baby. Official predictions from the two of us. Um, do you want to go first? 
Yeah, I got I got uh, Sixers in or sorry, Sixers. I got mm. Raptors in seven. Okay. And the reason for that is because you can't blow a three one lead unless it's goes to game seven. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just I, gonna look, listen. Mm-hmm. All we can do is you know, the, the best determinant of future outcomes is to look at previous yeah. events. Okay. And when something like happens that. three times to like one that. person yep. with three different teams, you probably have to go like, yeah, probably that's probably the one. So game Raptors is in seven. I like previous events too. And listen, acknowledge is the Raptors show. Maybe there's some bias, but tell me right now, who has a better playoff resume? Legit. Fred Van Vliet or James Harden? Legit. I mean, come on, man. It's different. Because... How is it different, though? Who has a who is a better who Who would you count on more as a, as a quote unquote like secondary player, role player? OG Ananobi or Tobias Harris? Okay, that that's not different. Okay, I would, I would take OG. Well, I I would even put up Pascal Siakam's playoff resume against Joel Embiid too. I only saw one of those guys go to the finals and perform there. All I'm saying is, in a lot of the big games this year, Fred, OG, and like Pascal like have it. have stepped up, and they're the guys that are going to lead the way. You know, that's the championship experience right there. Which player do you think is more likely to break out in this series? We talked about Tyrese Maxey so much. Tyrese Maxey or Scotty Barnes, who looks like a generational player? Yeah, well, I mean, come okay. on, Scotty, Scotty. So I going to say Tyrese Maxey or Precious Achua. That one would have been tough, too. I mean, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, why are we, you know, setting the expectations low for Scotty when he has just crushed them all year, right? Like, listen, maybe there will be rookie missteps. But I'm confident that, you know, once he shakes that off, maybe in the first game, first couple of games, that he's going to settle in and have a huge impact on this series. Who did you say have a better bench between the Raptors oh, and the man, Sixers? Come on, man. So it's the Raptors, right? Who's yeah. got the better coach? Mm. Nikki Nurse or Mr. Glenn? <laughs> Mr. Glenn? Come <laughs> on, man. I'm just saying. Yeah. No, you're listen, right, man. They've got you're Joel Embiid. They've got Joel Embiid. They've got James Harden. Having said all that, it's going to be a very tough series. I think, you know, the Raptors, all the concerns about the half-court scoring, can they get out in transition, how are they going to stop Joel Embiid, all of this stuff. I think all of this stuff, even the home-court advantage, I think is huge. Uh, you know, the fact that the Sixers... But also, as the series goes on, if it's 2-2, if it's 3-2, 3-3, three, two, three, three, is, is the pressure not going to build for the Sixers? Isn't the pressure only going to get ratcheted up as the series goes on? Like, oh. if you go into yeah, a Game yeah, no, 7, you're right, you're, you're right. if you go into a Game 7 in Philadelphia, who's got all the pressure? Well, not James Harden, according to James Harden. James Harden's like, I'm just here to hoop. Listen, having said all that, you know, I don't think Raptors are going to coast in this, but, like, I'm going to take the Raptors in 7. I really, I really do okay. think. So you gave me a whole speech just yeah. to give you the same prediction <laughs> I had? It's called, uh, on, it's called killing time.